Welcome to a very exciting episode of Tubules Live. Today we are very lucky to have Dr. Chris Orr with us. Chris is a past president and accredited uh, member of the British Association of Cosmetic Dentistry. He's also a certified member of the European Society of Cosmetic Dentistry. He lectures both in the UK and worldwide, and also runs a very popular one-year restorative course on aesthetic and cosmetic dentistry from his teaching facilities and practice in central London. So, today's topic is Beyond Smile Design, planning the whole mouth for function and aesthetics. So, without further ado, I'd now like to hand over the floor to Dr. Chris Orr. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for um, the invitation to join me. Um, thank you, Rena. Thank you, Drew. Um, this evening, what I want to talk about is really the thought process that I go through with patients when I meet them for the first time. Um, a lot of patients today come into our practices with problems related to dental aesthetics. Um, and when we're thinking about aesthetic treatment, it's no longer just about making things look pretty. We have to make everything work functionally as well and do so in the most conservative way that we possibly can. Um, as Rena has mentioned, um, I spend probably about half my time um, in my practice, um, probably slightly different to most people's practices, interesting base of patients. Most of my patients are over the age of 50. Most of them are referred in because they have complex problems that either needs somebody to take control of the whole mouth or to work with a team of people to try and fix all the problems that they have. Um, interestingly also, probably about a third of my patients are um, other dentists, which is interesting again, just a very um, educated group of patients. Um, I also spend quite a bit of my time doing lectures and seminars. Most of that is from our teaching facility in London Bridge. Um, I used to call it our new place, but actually it's now five years old and we've had lots of people through the doors. The reason for moving to the dedicated facility was just to provide much better quality of hands-on, as you can see in the bottom uh, right-hand section in the lab. Much easier to do that than in, in the hotel rooms where we used to work from. Um, Drew and some of the other people on the um, forums will know I spend quite a lot of my time outside of dentistry doing photography, um, major hobby and really an excuse to indulge um, lots of things when I go away to interesting places. Um, but really the topic that I've wanted to talk about this evening is to try and lead you through the thought process that I go through when I meet a patient for the first time. Um, a lot of the time the patients who I see it is complicated, that's why they were referred in. And from a certain perspective, diagnosis is really just part of risk management. Um, working out where all the potential problems that we may have with a patient um, and identifying the areas where we can try and control the risk that we wish to take with the patient. Um, the ideal treatment plan, of course, will address all the problems, control all the risks, or if we're making a compromise in certain areas, then of course we need to be aware of that at the beginning because at the beginning, it's part of the diagnosis. If you tell the patient afterwards, it's an excuse, as you all know. Um, so really, it's a process of comprehensive screening. Um, much of what I do when I meet a patient for the first time, it's things that we're all familiar with. Um, a dental charting, test looking for caries, thinking not just about the current disease the patient has, but thinking about the patient's risk of future disease. Um, also periodontal screening, BPE, a very good example of a screening tool that it tells you where the problem areas are and it also tells you what to do with those red flags that you get if you get a code 3 or a code 4. Um, whatever x-rays are indicated by that and also I make an assessment of the patient's um, aesthetics and also an assessment of their, their current occlusion. Um, it's probably important to say here that I try to separate the information gathering part of the um, examination from the treatment planning. Nobody, I think, can treatment plan um, comprehensively at the chair side. And the reason for that is there are simply too many decisions to be made all at once. So the process that I go through, I try to evaluate the things at the chair side that I can only evaluate at the chair side and gather all the rest of the information that I will need to sit down and think about things afterwards to work out what the best options for the patients are based on their presenting conditions and what their personal preferences may be. Probably the biggest mistake that people make is to try and decide how we're going to do the treatment too soon into the treatment planning process. As you'll see from the picture on the right, clinical photography, very major part of the information gathering. 
gives us a very, very good permanent record of the patient's presenting condition. Um, I could go so far as to say that actually in this day and age, it's you know, getting to the point where it's supplanting charting as a good means of recording the, patient's, the condition of the patient's teeth. However, the traditional writing down on the record card of the restorations will persist for quite some time. Um, it's something that really comes up quite often in the discussions on the forum that people po post up clinical questions or they have a problem with a patient and somebody says, have you got any photographs? And they go, no, or they, they show two pictures that don't give all the information that other people on the forums would like to give to try and, to try and help them with whatever problem that they have. So I take a set of pictures, probably the minimum that I would take is the set that you see on the screen. Um, it's also quite useful for establishing with the patient what they want um, because we can go through it, we can show the patient the pictures one by one. Typically the ones that I will show are on the screen right now, the ones on the left show the patient how their smile and teeth look when they look in the, mouth, or when they look in the mirror and look at themselves. The pictures on the right of the screen and in the middle show the patient how we see their teeth. And sometimes those are two slightly different perspectives. The pa what the patient may put um, importance on may be rather different from what um, we place importance on. But the whole point of a consultation is that you can identify what things you see as an issue and also the patient is involved in telling you what their priorities are. For some patients, it'll be the shape and the appearance of anterior teeth, maybe the color of the teeth, it might be to do with amalgam restorations. It varies enormously from, from person to person. But armed with the information from the examination, armed with the photographs,